Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy. My channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're going to do our daily technical analysis update of commodities. Uh, work our way through, like we always do, dollar yields, precious metals, and commodities and ETFs that this guy follows. <clears throat> if you need any help with anything, check out finding-value.com. Backwards on the camera. And <clears throat> we've got a 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time tomorrow question and answer session for all the members. Uh, we do have a discount coupon code. Discount is the coupon code. If you'd like to join and attend, there are some opportunities that could be propping up here uh, over the next month or two if uh, if we see some movements uh, and sustained movements in gold and silver. So got a lot of com <clears throat> companies that we follow. Uh, they're not super, some are super speculative, some are not. Uh, they're more producers, stuff like that, if you're interested. So let's dive in here. I'll give you my financial opinions as we go. And we're going to start with the dollar. Uh, the dollar still looking funky. <laughs> uh, nice strong move yesterday. Uh, small profit taking day. Bloody nose is what I like to call it. And it does look like we could continue higher with the DXY. Uh, back out. Uh, we're right here is where we're at in this kind of upward channel at the moment. Uh, but this very well could be the peak, and then we get another peak, and then everything else goes down uh, to a much lower level <clears throat> whenever yields decide to roll over. And you know what? That's not that clear to me. It really isn't. So if we go look at yields, the two-year looks like it wants to go lower. This definitely does look like it wants to go lower. Why do I say that? Well, we squeezed up into this corner here. We broke out to the downside. And a lot of the times you go back and do a return move. And we'll see if this falls downward. Um, that means the short end of the curve is coming down because people could be worried about uh, a recession or a slowdown. Uh, it's still out there. Uh, but again, we have to see that actually fall. The 10-year and the 30-year still look absolutely resilient to heck. Um, and maybe we just get a little pullback before heading on up. But again, we're sitting on top of patterns for the 10-year and the 30-year. So this still looks like it wants to go higher. Same with the 30-year, the still wants to go higher. So are we going to have the long end of the curve go up and the short end kind of stay where it's at? It could be a case. could be. <clears throat> But um, that, that's what we've got with yields in the dollar at the moment. Uh, TYX, TNX ratio is holding steady. Uh, well, slightly lower, I should say. Just slightly lower. So it's hold, holding steady. Uh, bond, bonds definitely came up today, 1.8% on the 20-year. But bonds still look like, they still look like garbage, guys. Um, this has a lot of work to do. If, if, you, if you're a bull in bonds, you've got a long way to go, I think. And then we've got the two, <clears throat> two year, 10 year yield. Uh, the two and 10 yield curve, it's inverted uh, today. It inverted more. So it looked like we were coming on down, but man, this thing's maybe it's coming back up. Um, I'm still in the camp that we could have higher yields. I, I don't see that. I mean, that, that, that's a strong possibility. Uh, other people think that we're going to go right into a recession and. It, that's also possible. <laughs> I'm trying to watch this thing, and it's juking you out everywhere. It's all over the place. And when it's all over the place, in terms of yields, uh, especially the tenure, how how much this is moving up and down, uh, that's your. I mean that that's basically what's pricing all these assets. So we're going to get a lot of volatility here, I think, uh, in a, in a lot of different assets. Gold. <laughs> Oh, man, look at gold today, 3.12%. At least that's what it last flashed. Um, I thought we were going lower, guys. What's going on with this? A big move up today. I understand there's probably fear with war and all that. I get it. I get it. Uh, what we're asking is, is it sustainable? Is it going to kick off a big move to the upside? Let's wait. Let's watch. 
And what I'd like to see is the gold and silver mining companies rip it. That means that it's probably going to be sustainable. And then we've got gold, uh, and we want silver to rip it too. Uh, but we got we got to see some follow through here. It's not just one scared kind of news day. We want to see it come up and dig out of that bottom. If it digs out of that bottom, guys, you know that this is this being a false breakdown. <clears throat> False breakdown. This is the slingshot where we can move on up. So get ready. Let's see what we got ahead of us. And if we get moving, guys, I'm going to be a major gold and silver bull. Uh, not that I wasn't before. I mean, I'm going to be major, <laughs> major, maybe even the miners if the miners get moving. Uh, silver ripping higher as well. Uh, that looks good. A uh, nice strong movement today. Uh, we haven't broken anything yet, but gold is our leader, and gold is back above its resistance levels. Platinum up, not as much as the other ones, but it will follow. Uh, this this could be the the lost dog that's straggling behind, but um, it'll come around. It'll come around. And then palladium, eh? This isn't my my cup of tea at this time. Uh, XAU to gold ratio <clears throat> up one point one one percent. We want to see it break this, this downtrend line, this big boy, the, the, the trend line for happiness that I call it. We break that, guys. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be pretty bullish on gold and silver mining companies. This is coming from a really cheap level down here. Very, very cheap. I know a lot of people don't care about this sector, which makes me care a lot about it. Another thing that you, you want to look at is sometimes it comes all the way back down to this level here. Maybe we get one last little and then we launch up. Uh, I don't know yet, but I'm going to watch it. Uh, CRB index, ripping higher. Oil was up today. Uh, big outperformance um, against other asset classes. This is against the S&P, ripping it. Uh, looks like it could go higher. I mean, obviously, we are starting this wave three, and it's supposedly going to go to the moon here. So... I mean, <clears throat> for whatever reason people want to associate it with, I mean, commodities are going to go up either way. Uh, they probably got into a war so they could say, look, it's because of the war. Or, or maybe they're getting into a war to, to have an excuse to print a bunch of money because they have to. I don't know what their you know, prerogative is, but it could be that. But a good outperformance today. Uh, GDX ripping 4.36% looks good. We had a bearish engulfing yesterday, so the news coming out definitely reversed that. That's for sure. GDXJ also higher, and SILJ also um, getting getting people off kilter here <clears throat> with the large selling pressure yesterday. Um, I thought we were going to go lower, but nope, it reversed on up. Crude oil absolutely ripping it. Looks like we broke the downtrend too. Yay, downtrend break. <laughs> uh, right against support. Uh, let's see if we get some, some traction here. Um, <clears throat> right on top of support. That's what it looks like. So it looks good. Let's see if we can keep going uh, next week. TTF gas up 3.89%. That looks pretty beastly. Look at the beast. That's just a middle finger right at everybody. Oh, you thought I was going to go down. <laughs> Big break out on that gas. Uh, Nat Gas and Henry Hub down a little bit today. Uh, we do have a little bit. We had a little rounding off. You can see those wicks at the top, the smaller guys there. Sometimes this is a continuation pattern, but it looks like it pooped to the downside. A little bit of um, moving lower. So this is our breakout. We'll get a return move most likely, and then we're off to the races again. Uh, XOP, yeah, you know me, kissing its neck line. <laughs> This is the neckline here. Uh, we're right up on top of that neckline for the inverted head and shoulders. Uh, this is a monster pattern, and we all know what monster patterns do. They change lives. Uh, we're probably going to see a big move to the upside when that breaks. Uh, it's up against it. <clears throat> we do have some selling pressure here coming into it, and we've had a kind of a, an unorthodox move to the upside. So we'll see where it goes from here. Uh, OIH also. Uh, up today, 1.5%. I don't like all these red candlesticks, though. But, you know, sometimes you don't get what you want. That's what I'll say. 
big long-term, big picture view. Uh, it still looks good like we could break higher. Uh, Sprout Fizzy Uranium Trust. I've got my awesome uh, little diagram I drew yesterday. Uh, looks like it's still holding true. Let's see if we can break out of this little uh, falling wedge to some extent. It's good that it's falling to the downside. We want wedges falling this way. We don't want wedges that are created this way, um, like, like, a, like a wedge that looks like that. Uh, we want them to be falling in nature, uh, like it is here. It's falling. That generally indicates that we want to break to the upside. URA, uh, it's the same thing, guys. It's it's all the same thing. You can draw your little patterns here, you know, little little guys there. It's a con it's a consolidation. Well, maybe we get one little hump in here, and then we're off to the races again. That's my guess. Um, it's the same thing in URNN. If you if you just draw it the way that this thing is starting to kind of, I don't, I don't think it's going to be a head and shoulders. Uh, it looks like to me that we're holding up here. Uh, unless we break to the downside, we might have a little bit more downside if it does. Uh, but it looks like they're kind of falling, uh, forming some sort of falling wedge. Uh, I know some people are getting a little worried about this. Uh, yeah, that could it could pop down uh, before heading higher. Uh, it'd just be kind of a slingshot move. But again, we'll see what happens. Uh, tan <clears throat> down a little bit. It uh, looks like TAN's just as scared as the overall markets. Still looks good to go higher, though. This is just small three little candlesticks. They're not, they're not big. COPX down a little bit. Uh, I'm sure all this, the war and everything, it's probably not good for the economies around the world, but uh, we're still within the, the channel. Uh, lithium down a little bit, coming off that support resistance level. Uh, REMX, the same thing. And again, I think these are all highly linked to where, where you think yields are going to go. And <clears throat> looking at yields, I still think they can go higher. But and I think these, these could go lower with those yields going up. These are all a bunch of companies that are generally not cash flow rich. Lots of speculative companies in all these, uh, like Lithium, uh, TAN. They're not big money cash flowing machines. So uh, I think they're going to be more subject to interest rate movements. Uh, SPX, SPX getting a little bit of a sell-off today. Is this thing going to fall or is it going to go up? Now, my guess is it's going to fall. In higher interest rates, S&P is going to go sideways to lower. That's my guess. Same with the NASDAQ. <clears throat> sideways to lower with interest rates going up. And that is my guess for right now. With the data that we've gotten, it's all these red candlesticks in this circle here. They're all over the place. Generally, that's someone selling uh, and they are getting rid of shares and they're going to rotate them into uh, other sectors. <clears throat> KRE uh, down, looks like that could have further to fall. Uh, no trend line uh, break here as far as I can tell eyeballing it. There's your trend line. It's still looking like garbage. But um, I think we could go down to this support level down at 35. Uh, emerging markets down a little bit, but holding on. Um, not much to really say there. I still like it. Still think it's going to go up. We've got XHB coming on down 0.6% with the overall markets. There's a lot of selling pressure up here. Uh, and this is another sector that is interest rate sensitive at this time. Portability is. It's high, or I should say it's, it's not affordable, put it that way. Uh, Moo looks like it's trying to put in a bottom. You get a nice, good bear, bullish engulfing, a little pop higher, and then a nice little squeeze down. Boom! Let's go, Moo. Come on, Moo. Let's get moving. Uh, copper. Uh, now, that, see, Copper, why is it sending me mixed signals all over the place? It's almost like someone's trying to manipulate this, all right? This looks very good over here. Got a nice big bullish engulfing, big up candlestick, small down candlestick. It's got all the ingredients for this thing to break to the upside. Then all of a sudden, it's like someone just hammered this thing down. They have a big old hammer here. Boom! Kicked us out of the pattern. But it's like they forgot to continue to keep doing it. Um, big big up move, small small pullback. Still looks like it wants to go up. So we'll see where this thing goes over the next few weeks.
Uh, iron ore still looking good. I think we we're going to rip to the upside. We got a little, little downtrend. Close. Almost a downtrend break. We're getting close. Uh, nickel. Uh, we're up, but again, uh, there's no green army. No big green candlesticks. Just, just I wouldn't do anything. Aluminum down a little bit. What is aluminum doing? You, 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 you break out. <clears throat> you break out here, and then all of a sudden you come all the way back. <clears throat> really, aluminum? Really? That's how you repay me? <laughs> um, here's the bottom here. So right up against resistance, it looks like, support. So, again, we'll see what this thing does. And we'll watch it. Uh, Baltic dry index down a little bit. This thing's been on fire. So it may have a little bit of a pullback. But again, this, this thing looks good to go higher. Higher, higher. Newcastle coal looking strong up 0.84. I like it here, guys. I like some of the coal uh, things right now. Nat gas on a worldwide basis, uh, breaking to the upside. Henry Hub, um, the TTF. Coal's going to just follow it, guys. So, you know, it's just a little puppy. It's just going to follow wherever, wherever Nat gas goes. So I think it's going to go a lot, lot higher to a land far, far away. To a place much higher. Uh, Bitcoin's holding steady. Same with Ethereum holding steady today. Uh, I still don't like the way that they look, but again, we'll watch it as we progress. Uh, but that's what we've got for today, guys. Uh, give me a thumb up for the content, subscribe to the channel or the website, either one or both. And <clears throat> overall, guys, are these big moves in oil and are the big moves in gold going to be sustainable? That's really what we should be asking. If the move is going to be sustainable in gold and silver, then gold and silver mining companies should be on your radar list along with the physical metals. Um, they're cheap, and we've got some positive movement. If it's just off of news and this thing all kind of deteriorates, then we have to see and revert back to what are the markets going to do. Um, I think that we've got an inverted yield curve where generally gold and silver do very well anyway when that uninverts. Pretty good spot to be looking at it, in my opinion. And if interest rates go up uncontrollably, that could be another good spot to be anyway. I mean, it's good for basically any of the outcomes that I can think of. <clears throat> the physical metals could do very well. Uh, the gold and silver mining companies that could vary because they're they're based off of um, a little bit different underlying mix than just the precious metals going up. Um, they're looking at margins. So if we get gold and oil rocketing at the same time, uh, their margins may not increase as much as what most people may think. Um, we saw that like 03, 04, 05 time frame, and the gold and silver mining companies did not participate in that move. Uh, so it's something to watch, but I will say gold and silver mining companies are extremely cheap. And that might be an area to at least put on a watch list and see what it does and see if we can get a big move to the upside. So that's what I've got for today, guys. Uh, catch you guys tomorrow who are, who are part of the community, uh, 7 a.m. Uh, on Saturday, so tomorrow. All right, guys, we'll catch you later. This is Finding Value.